the near side will be Dwayne Goins, and that's Maurice Harris, number 29, at the top. They're both standing on the goal line, and if Ream gets all of this one, it is unlikely we'll have a return and should have our first possession, first down and 10 at our own 20-yard line. Let's see if they've whistled to the go yet. I think they have. Broadcast brought to you in part by the train company, like the fight in Texas Aggies. Hard to stop a train. There's the kick, and it will sail into the end zone, and a knee on top of the S in Texas by Goins. Shy of the end line, and now bring it out to the 20, and let's see how this Aggie offense will perform against this defense. Any idea about what our first play might be? Uh, actually, yes. Uh, last week we set up uh, Dwayne Goins with a lot of motion, and I anticipate they'll put Goins in motion, and they'll have him fake a block and then go out into the flat and try to hit him quickly in the flat. And uh, if they drop coverage, uh, it could be a big play for the Aggies. Michael, we'll see. Michael Mayhan will open up at that right tackle. And we got Andre Brooks back uh, this week. Did not play against Iowa State. Single setback. Now man in motion. That's Goins. Under center will be Ferris. Play action. Rolling. Looking to throw. He does. Well, Derek Broughton. 30, 32, 33 yard line. First play of the ball game. First and 10, Texas A&M. Well, Dave, it was exactly the play that we, we expected to see. Goins go slipped as he was trying to go out in the flat. And Mark Ferris rolling to his right. Found Roderick Broughton on the hook pattern. Perfect throw on the run. It'll pick up 13 and a first down for the Aggies on their first play. Four receptions, now 38 yards for the season for Roderick Broughton. Two wides to the left, one to the right. Shotgun Ferris running back to his right appears to be Weber. First down and 10, and we'll run the option. Now it goes to Weber on the right corner, stringing it out into the sideline across the 35-37. Lowered his head and boomed in to Monty Barcel. That first tackle, by the way, had two Texans in on the first tackle today for uh, Kansas State, one of which was Terry Pierce, did start today. He's out of Fort Worth, Western Hills. Those, that tackle that time made by McGraw, their number one tackler, and also by Monty Bicell. Aggies break the huddle on second down now and six, picking up four. To the bottom will come Ferguson. Two receivers, a slot left. Tight end right, Lonnie Madison. Shotgun for Ferris. Has the snap. Inside handoff. Goins looking for the corner. Spun around. Now goes down. Lost back to the 32-yard line. We'll lose about five yards. And it was Monty Bicel who stayed home and put the pressure on Goins. And now a third down and 11 coming up. Aggies need the 43. Well, the Aggies were hoping that the emotion they used last week with Goins would set up a play like this. It's the complimentary play. They never did give the ball to Goins last week. Kansas State was obviously prepared for that when they'll drop it for a loss. Third and long for the Aggies. Empty in the backfield. Three wides to the left, two to the right. Shotgun. McKinney out over the ball. Third down and 11. Line of scrimmage. The Aggie 32. They need their 43. There's the snap. Little high. Drops back. Set up a screen to the left side. Taylor's got the 40, 45, 50. Breaks out of there. Down to the 40-yard line. 39. K-State side of the 50. First to 10, Texas A&M. That one's going to go 29 yards, 13-36 to go on the first, and no score. This is a jailbreak screen. Chris Taylor coming back to the ball, and Ferris delivers it to him quickly. He got good blocking out at the point of attack, and went straight up the field, all the way down inside the 40-yard line to the 39. The Aggies are moving. Have it now, first down and 10. K-State, 39-yard line, hash left. Single setback. That will be Toombs. We'll send Ferris in under the center. Goins going left to right, trying to get set. Roderick Barton returns as the tight end. Long snap count. Has the ball. Hands it off to Toombs. Hits the right side. And maybe a yard as he squirms and he tugs to the 37 and a half yard line. First man to uh, make contact was Mario Fadafehi. Uh, interesting game so far, an interesting game plan for Kansas State so far. They like to bring pressure, and so far they've not come on the blitz. You might expect it here on second and eight. Second down coming up, 12.45 on the clock. It's going to be a, a short nine, long eight. Line of scrimmage is the K-State 37 and a half. The Aggies need the 29. Single setback. Had a slide left, break it, Taylor in motion, left to right, roll right after the snap, throw the ball, caught, out of bounds at the 30-yard line, not enough for the first down, Taylor made the running catch, 
coming back to the Aggie bench on this side of the field. Run out of bounds by Duran Tyler, a junior out of California. Now the Aggies have third down and about a yard. Well, as we told you in the playbook, they're going to try to move Ferris in the pocket. This time rolling to the right. He wants to try to avoid that rush pressure, and he was able to hit this one and get very close to the first down. They're going to need a yard. Two receptions on the day now for Taylor. He's got 19 now for the year. Third down and short. Two tight ends, two flankers, break the eye, coming back this way, give it to Toombs, Toombs, first down as he breaks it out to the 26-yard line. To the 26, he fell down, or he might have had more. Somebody got a hand on the ankle, and he stumbled forward, first down the Aggies. 12-24 to go, we're in the first quarter, it's first and 10 A&M, now at the KSU 26, no score in the ball game. Trying to keep K-State off balance, that time they go on short yards with the off-balance line to the left, and then they just run it right up the middle, but they got plenty from uh, Jamar Toombs to pick up the first. Johnson, Porter, Taylor to the left. Here on the right is a wide out will be Ferguson. Shotgun running back Toombs to the left of Ferris. Has time to throw underneath to Johnson. Shoots a man and he has a first down. He's going to be close and he didn't get it. Right at the point needed for the first down at the 16-yard line. Deron Tyler will push him out there. And let's see, Dave. It looks like they did pick it up. Clock has stopped as he went out of bounds. A first down, Texas A&M. 12.02 to go in the first quarter. Aggies driving. No score in the ball game. First possession of the game. Well, one of the things you can do against man-to-man -man coverage when you get in that slot is a run across. Your outside guy comes in. Your inside guy goes out. That inside guy caught the, the ball, and the, uh, the guy coming in from the outside knocked off the coverage. Same wides to the left, same to the right. Shotgun. We've got a running back to the right of Ferris. I think it's so uh, Weber waiting on the snap. Inside handoff. Goes to Weber. Caught as he hits the line of scrimmage. Nothing there. Wrapped up around the waist by Chris Johnson. It'll be that same 10, except it'll be second down. Uh, that's uh, that cross buck where they bring Weber back in and Ferris continues the fake as if he's going to go on the bootleg. Uh, that time it didn't look like anybody checked Ferris on the bootleg. That might be something we'll see later. Check the offensive line as they break the huddle and see if we have any changes. All starters in there right now. The guards are Whitley and Valletta. The tackles are Tangle, McCauley, and Mayhem. And empty in the backfield. Three wides to the right, two to the left. There's no tight end in this formation. On second down and ten. Has it on a uh, drop, and he'll throw across the middle. Incomplete as he dropped back across his 20, trying to get it into the hands of Bethel Johnson. And now AM will face third down and ten, stopping the clock at 11 19 to go in the first quarter, and no score. Here comes Jamar Toombs back out on the field for AM. Well, finally, they go to the, uh, to the rush, and uh, this was a quick pattern. I think Bethel would tell you he. Thinks he should have caught that ball. Deron Tyler wrapped all the way around him, but the ball was there. Would have had it, but shy of a first down. So instead, we face third down and 10. Working into the wind here in the first quarter. Running back to the left to Ferris. Three wides to the right. We've got uh, one to the left set up as a split in. Quarterback draw. It's going to be Ferris looking for the corner. Stiff arms the man. Gets across the 15 and to the 14-yard line. Fumble the ball, but he was down on the fumble. And here comes Terrence Kitchens. Ben Lieber wrapped him up. And so the drive will stall out, and apparently a and will try a field goal from the 14-yard line, a 24-yard effort. And Ferris from the 20 to the 29 in that range is, or rather, uh, Kitchens, is 7 out of 7. Chance Pierce is the deep snapper. Ball will be spotted at the 21-yard line, so a 31-yard effort. And in this range, he is 1 out of 1. Bonovich holds, a little bit low on the snap. The kick looked low, and the Aggies will scratch. Change the numbers on the scoreboard. It is 3 to nothing. Good job by Bonovich that time. The snap a little bit low, but he was able to get it up. And as Dave said, the kick a little low, but it split the uprights, and the Aggies take the early lead. This broadcast brought to you in part by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting. Middle return man is Aaron Lockett at the 5. Top side return man is Quincy Morgan here on the bottom. Chris Claybon. Here's the kick into the wind, coming up to beat it, lock it at the 15. Here comes his return, looking for a scene. The Aggies wrap him up around the ankles, and that'll be the 12th man today. And that man is Robert Jordan. 12th man got him at the 26-yard line. Uh, working against the wind like this, kicking into the wind, a great kick by Skates. It went way high, gave the Aggies time to get down on the coverage, and uh, kicking against this wind, they'll take inside the 30-yard line all day long. So here we go to get a look at 
Jonathan Beasley, 6'1", 215, a senior, three letters out of Glendale, Arizona. His efficiency rating is number six in the nation at 154.8. Has an eye formation lined up behind him, put the fullback in motion. Here's the penalty marker down, one, two, three of them. They must have moved. They did move, it was the right tackle for uh, K-State. Moved before the snap and it's loud in the stadium. It's hard to hear the snap count. They came out in an I formation. First down and now 15. Back it up to the 21 yard line. Drop back to pass, shallow pocket. Throws, high, intercepted. It'll be Glenn. Here comes the return to the 20. He's looking for a block. He got it coming back to the side of the field. And he jumps over a man at the 20, at the 15, at the 10, at the 5. He goes head on into one of their running backs and knocks him down. And they go into a pile at the four-yard line. Jason Glenn, whose brother Aaron was inducted into the Hall of Fame last night, just made a Hall of Fame play. Oh, what a huge play, Dave. They wanted to get the quick route, the quick out route. Jason Glenn with a perfect drop, got in the throwing lane, showed good hands, and then good running ability after the interception. He'll take it all the way down to the K-State three-yard line, first and goal. 25-yard line on the interception, return to the tw- to the uh, three-yard line, and he used his blocking. He started on the far side of the field, stretched it all the way to this side of the field. Here we go for the Aggies, up 3-0, 10-15 to go on the first. First down and goal at the three-yard line. Two tights, flanker right, high formation. Fullback, Stacy Jones, handed off, flags, we moved. I think we're going to be penalized five yards on first and goal at the three, and if that's the case, it'll be first and goal back at the eight. Yep. Want to talk to the coach for the ninth year in a row? It's the R.C. Slocum call-in show. Thursday nights at 7 o'clock over many of these same stations as well as the Internet. That phone number to talk to the coach on Thursday from Wings and More, 1-800-927-9979. Aggies now have turned in 12 interceptions on the season. And for Jason Glenn, that will be his first IMT. Back us up to the eight. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Single setback. Two wides on the left. Goins in motion. Left to right to the short side. Goes to two. Sort of stumbled as he tried to get back to the line of scrimmage. And I don't know that that was a great handoff. As Ferris got there, he stumbled and then fell back to the north end zone. So now bring up second and goal from the eight-yard line. We well, have 9.59 to go in the first quarter. The Aggies up three to nothing. Well, they're trying to, to run off tackle, off of motion. And actually, the hole opened up a little bit wide and Toombs could not get to make the cut to get out into the hole. It was there if he could have just uh, made the quick cut and gotten outside, but as it is, he'll uh, get no gain. Got an eye formation with the lead back being Toombs, and behind him is Maurice Harris. Motion man will be Ferguson going left to right. There's the snap, delay to Harris. Harris hits the middle, fights his way across the five with a man on his waist. He will go near the four-yard line as we try the middle. And now a third down and goal at about the four and a half. Ben Lieber, a junior out of South Dakota who had ten tackles in their visit with Texas Tech in Manhattan. Just made that stop. Well, Joe Weber gives you great power at the tailback position. Had a great game against Iowa State, but you need somebody that can really get through the hole quickly when you're down this close to the goal line. That's what Harris brings you with Whitaker Hurt. Taylor comes to this side. The top side uh, will be a slot with Ferguson, the slot man, to his left. I think that'll be Taylor. That was Bethel Johnson throwing the ball. And it goes to the goal line, and it's incomplete defensive there. Deron Tyler intended for Bethel Johnson. The two collided as the ball arrived at the goal line. Incomplete. And here comes Terrence Kitchens again. So we don't capitalize on that five-yard penalty. Hurt. Yeah, it always does hurt when you're down close to the goal line. They had first and goal at the three. Now it's first and goal at the eight. And those are tough yards inside the 10-yard line. This one will be spotted down at the 12, a 22-yard effort. The ball almost in the middle of the field. Pierce the deep snapper. Bonovich the holder. Bonovich has the ball. Spots it down. The kick is on its way. The Aggies make it a 6 to nothing lead with 8.47 to go here in the first quarter as we'll take a break leading K-State. We'll kick off the Aggies rail to the Wildcats when we come back. This is Texas Aggie football. Dave, back up to you. All right. Kitchens has kicked off and it will be taken at the 10-yard line. That's Lockett has a save. He's to the 30 flag down. They're going to get him for a hole back about the 18-yard line or a block in the back, one or the other. 
You would have think that where the, the marker was dropped. 8.37 to go. We are in the first quarter. A&M's got a couple of field goals. It is six to nothing, Dave. First down and 10. Kansas State, hash right. They break the huddle on the sideline, come back out on the field. This broadcast brought to you in part by the Association of Farmer Students. We are the Aggie Network. Aggies lead here by a score of six to nothing. Jonathan Beasley is their quarterback. He's under center. They broke the eye, and both guys stepped up to hear something. They can't hear the snap count of the play of the automobilizers. And it's a handoff on the backfield, back to the line of scrimmage at the 10. That'll be all. Line of scrimmage, it'll be second down and 10. Jumping on his back, Michael Jamison. Michael Jamison coming on the safety blitz, and he picked the right spot. Went right into the hole, just off the right side of the center. The play's going to his left. He was able to adjust and make the tackle for no gain. Lockett, the ball carrier that time. And he got back to the line of scrimmage. They got a load as their fullback. His name is Rock Cartwright. He is a rock. He's 5'8", 242. He leaves the ball game. And they will hand off a uh, delay to Allen. Allen back to the uh, nine. Lost a yard in the backfield. Stop made by Cornelius Anthony. Making his 32nd career start today. Make it 33 career starts for the senior out of Missouri City. Third down and 11 coming. Ags will bring Robertson and Jay Brooks onto the field. Cornelius Anthony comes off and the big cat, Ronald Flemons, off the field. Third down and 11. They have a wide going to the right. That's Martez Wesley. He's dangerous. They got a slot on the left. No tight end in the, uh, I'll check that. They got a tight end right. Out of the shotgun, drops back to his goal line, looking to throw, he does, and it will be caught. It's enough for a first down on his knees, Quincy Morgan at the 20-yard line. First and 10 for Kansas State, 7-16 to go in the first quarter, an 11-yard pass and catch. First and 10, it's 6 to nothing in favor of Texas A&M on a couple of field goals by Terrence Kitchens. Uh, Beasley back in the shotgun, he had plenty of time to throw and uh, got to Morgan on the comeback pattern, did a, did a curl route and then came back to the, to the quarterback and was able to pick up the first. Nick Warren's the tight end, left slot right, give it off to Allen, hits the middle, line of scrimmage, back to the 20, wrapped up around the way. Brought down right there, sure tackle by Brian Gamble, sophomore out of Alto. He was the Big 12 Player of the Week after the Baylor game and just made a stop on their fine running back, David Allen. 38 carries, 154 yards into the game, but has spent a lot of time on the uh, injured list and just now getting back into play. Here's second down and 10 at the 20. High formation. Beasley, the quarterback, under his center, breaks the eye. The fullback went in motion. Deep pitch going to Allen. Has the seam 30 out to the 35, across the 35 to the 36-yard line. First down, Kansas State. Michael Jamison and Sean Weston wrap him up. 16-yard game. Well, so far, the Wildcats have been uh, been trying to hammer the middle, hammer the middle, hammer the middle, and the Aggies have totally shut down that power running game. This time they put the fullback in motion and pitch it to Allen. He finds a seam outside on the sweep, and he'll go all the way out to the 36-yard line. 6.15 to go in the first quarter. The Aggies lead by a score of 6-0. First down and 10 at the 36. Run the option. Here is the deep pitch coming back to Allen, stringing it out to this sideline. Into the sideline he goes. Back to the line of scrimmage. He got the 30 X. 38-yard line. Make it the 36 is where they'll run him out. And Terrence Keel, the sophomore from Lufkin, who has interceptions this year against Tech, Baylor, and Iowa State. Just gave Allen, their fine running back, a push into the Aggie bench. Good containment and good pursuit by the Aggies. They had more than uh, enough people there to stop this for no gain. Break the huddle, come to the line, second down and 10, clock stopped on the out of bounds, 6.07 to go on the first period, split backs, under center, Beasley, two wides, one each side, calling an audible, they're all having to raise up to listen, moving in close because of the crowd noise, Aggies might be coming, run the option, looking for the pitch, makes it, and they'll lose about three, back to the 33 yard line, Aggies forced it into the sideline on this side, Dave, which was the short side, and that was well covered. Flemons was the first man to get a push on Allen after he got the pitch from Beasley. Well, Flemons is the key to, the, to making this play. Your defensive linemen do not figure in the quarterback or the pitch man on the option. Flemons made the quarterback pitch it, and that left everybody else outside to stop this for a loss. Morgan and Lockett go right. 
Got a wide here on the left. That's Martez Wesley. Running back to the right of Beasley will be the fullback Cartwright. He set up in a shotgun. Now he moves his running back from his right to his left. He'll take the snap at his 28. Line of scrimmage to 33. Pressure. Throws over the middle. Through behind his intended receiver. Lock it. Would not have been enough for a first down. Incomplete at the 37. Right on the hash mark. And Jason Glenn had Beasley that time in the crosshairs. Jason Glenn coming on the blitz that time and nobody touched him. He was in Beasley's face immediately. Beasley threw this ball long before he wanted to, well behind Lockett, and K-State will, for, will be forced to punt the football back to the Aggies. Travis Brown, sophomore out of Kansas, a 29 total on his kicks and 40.6 on his average. Kicking with the win, low snap. Aggies were coming up the middle. Good kick, waiting for it at the 16-yard line. Taylor, here's the return to the 20, 25, and tripped up as he hits the 28-yard line. Down. And as we come out on the fields, Kansas State had something like uh, 14 players out there, and they ran three of them off by sending another one in. Aggies first down and 10 at their own 29. Shotgun for Ferris will take the snap at the 24. Inside handoff will go to Whitaker, who didn't see action last week. Crosses the 35, goes to the 36. Wrapped up around the waist, and down they went. He and Gerard Cooper, a senior out of Pearland, Texas, who has 271 career tackles. Second down and three coming up. Boy, it's good to see Richard Whitaker back in this lineup. He gives him that breakaway threat and that quickness to get through those holes. This time, the Aggie offensive line opened up a good hole off left tackle. Whitaker scampered through it, and he'll pick up about seven. He went out after a carry in the Baylor game, so he was limited four carries, 33 yards, three wides to the right, one to the left. Shotgun running back to the left of Ferris inside handoff will go to Whitaker again has a first down across the 40 nice job there of reading the blocks getting the hole and carrying it out to the 42 yard line first and 10 A&M 505 to go on the first six nothing the Aggies over Kansas State and the Aggies with the ball boy the action word there Dave is the hole and the offensive line opening up those seams for Richard Whitaker to find room to run and uh, on two running plays now the Aggies have picked up a first down and this is perfect for the Aggies if they can run the ball and get the, out of the first quarter. They can get the wind in the second quarter. 4.50 clock rolls. I formation. Ferris puts his tail back in motion. Whitaker coming to the right side. A handoff went to Toomes. Toomes spins. Broke a tackle. Has a man with him. They go to the 50-yard line. Broke the first tackle. Had another man with him at about the 45. Went to the 50. Too shy of the first down. Second down and two coming up. Well, the, the big question from last week was could the Aggies come out and consistently do what they did last week in dismantling Iowa State 30-7? to And so far today, they've done just that. They've played extremely well on defense, and the offense is moving the ball consistently. Bethel Johnson comes to the right side. Up at the uh, top to the left will be Taylor and Ferguson. Tight end left. He's not covered up. Lonnie Madison. Taylor's in motion. Left to right. Hand off. Toomes. Butts his head and knocks a man down and carries for the first down to the 47-yard line. A yard more than he needed. He knocked John McGraw down, but McGraw had enough of a contact with Toombs to help Toombs go down, but he gets the first down. Four minutes exactly to go in the first. First and 10 A&M. Aggies lead six to nothing. Well, Aggies altering uh, their schemes and running the football. They just brought Jamar Toombs off to the sideline, put Whitaker back in. They go from power to speed. Coming into the game today, this defense is allowing just 73 yards a game rushing. Shotgun running back to the right of Ferris. Two wides left, tight end left, split in on the right. Ball favors, hash right. Line of scrimmage, the KSU 47. Start the option, Ferris keeps, jumps over a man. He's going to carry a man all the way down to the 30-yard line. Official spot, however, will be the 32. It was Milton Proctor, a junior, who caught him, but not before Ferris goes 15 yards on a first down. 3.30 to go in the first quarter. The Aggie 6, KSU nothing. What a great decision by Ferris and the thing I like most about this run is right in front of him is Seth McKinney his center running stride for stride and leading the way down inside the 40 yard line all the way down to the Wildcat 30 two yard line. And for McKinney 34 consecutive starts. 6-3 290 a junior. Two letters out of Austin Westlake. First and 10 at the 32 break the eye. Coming in motion Whitaker. Handoff. Tomes. Hits the 30, carries to the 29. He'll pick up three. It'll be second down and seven coming up. The Aggies, of course, unranked into the game today. KSU is eight and one pole, ten and the other. Here's second down and seven. 
Clock at 2.30 and rolling. Three wides on the right, one on the left is a split in. No tied in, running back to the left of Ferris. Inside, a handoff goes to Whitaker. Bottled up behind the line. He'll be caught and dropped back at the uh, KSU 34-yard line. Now the clock is going to work down to less than two minutes before the Aggies snap the ball again. Gerard Cooper made that stop. Good penetration on a blitz that time by uh, uh, the strong safety, Gerard Cooper. Drops to Whitaker for a pretty good loss, and he'll set up third and 13. This is the, the time where the Aggies need to convert. They'll have to throw the football more than likely to get this 13 yards for the first. Right to Huddle, come to the line of scrimmage. They'll need to get to the 22-yard line. Three wides to the left, one to the right. Shotgun running back here. We got what? A whistle and a timeout call by Kansas State. They didn't like something they saw, so they'll take a timeout. Two, two wides left, one to the right. Shotgun has time to throw. Will Taylor over the middle. Caught it first down inside the 15. They'll spot him officially at the 11-yard line. Taylor is a man possessed today. That goes 24 yards. Well, again, K-State elects to go with the four-man rush and takes seven into coverage. Taylor beat his man on the quick post. Ferris sees him perfectly, hits him perfectly, 24 yards down to the 11-yard line. This drive's still alive. Taylor now at least three receptions today. Dave, check down there and see what he's got on yards. You, you hit it, Dave. It's three, and he's got 61 yards oh, already. Oh, my. It's first down and 10 at the 11. The Aggies lead 6 to nothing, 120. And what do we get here? A timeout call by Texas A&M. Came to the line, didn't like something, so the Aggies immediately call a timeout. Aggies had to call a time because they were running out of 25-second clock there at the line of scrimmage. They'll run the play from a shotgun, running back to the right of Ferris. Has it, starts the option. Looking inside at the 10, at the 5. He's inside the 5, down to the 3. Butted down at the 3-yard line. First man to hit him for KSU will be Dyshad Carter, a senior out of Colorado. It's going to be a second down coming up and 2. The Ags can get inside the 1 and get themselves a first down. Here comes Stacy Jones, Jamar Toombs, and Lonnie Madison out onto the field for Texas A&M. Mark Ferris again making very, very good decision to keep the ball. He'll pick up about eight yards, and this, this crowd already calling the play, yelling Toombs. Toombs. Two tights. Ferguson is a flanker split out to the right side. Hash right. I formation. Toombs, the handoff, fighting on his knees. He got close to the two. And that'll be about it as he went to his knees at the two-yard line and Ben Lieber submarined him there. Uh, they tried to go off tackle with Stacy as the lead blocker. And, uh, boy, they're, they're going to mark this one down almost at the three, Dave, so very little gain there. That's Fred Spiller who just checked into the lineup for uh, Texas A&M. It was Spiller, one of the reserve tight ends, has checked in on third down and about a yard from uh, inside the three. Full house backfield, eye formation. Handoff will go to Toombs. Looking for the outside. Touchdown! Went to the left side. TD Toombs as time runs out in the first quarter. Toombs has scored his ninth touchdown of the season on a third down and one. Dave, we mentioned this earlier that uh, Toombs had a hole outside. He was unable to, uh, to get to it this time. He bounced it outside to get into the end zone. And with the Aggies leading 12 to nothing, it looks like they'll go for the two-point conversion here. Got to go for two as they lead right now, 12 to nothing. The Aggies, that was the last play of the first quarter. Aggies trying to get set here now. What are they doing? Ferris is looking to the sideline asking for a play. I think he's got it. Now he's got his team huddled up. They break the huddle. So going for two on the extra point. Empty in the backfield. Three wides to the right. Now a whistle. KSU is going to take a timeout. Play will be a shotgun to the right of Ferris. Will be Harris. Has the snap. Throws. Batted up in the air. And then uh, dropped and knocked away. And it ends up as an incomplete pass on the effort to go for two. So we'll hold the score at 12 to nothing. First quarter is over. We're going to the second quarter. Aggies will be kicking off, but they'll have the wind at their back now. The remaining... Aggies now on third downs are four out of six. KSU is one out of two. Here's the most telling statistic out of the uh, first quarter. AM ran 27 plays. Kansas State ran 10 plays. And the Aggies lead 12 to nothing. Second quarter's underway. 
High end under end cruise kick at the goal line, about three yards deep. Lock it. Coming back on the return to the 15. Found a little seam. Breaks across the 25. It goes to the 28 yard line. They are locked. Uh, about closer to the 29. First down and 10 KSU. They are so dangerous on their kick returns. This is when you'd like to see skates hit it into the end zone. But this one was real high and went all the way to the goal line. And the Aggies will uh, will go on defense uh, with uh, KSU at about their 29-yard line. KSU into the game today is 39% on their third downs. Their opponents are 29%. Again, the Aggies in the first quarter, four out of six on third downs. First down at 10, Beasley split backs. Line of scrimmage to 29. They're all handoff. Scoby, Scoby, Hall goes to the 35. He will get about six yards. And they'll face second down and four coming up, stopping the clock. Now the clock rolls from 439. Lennis Smith and Stephen Young getting some playing time. Made that tackle on Scoby. Scoby is 82, carries 397 yards into today's action. They break the huddle and the line of scrimmage the 35. Second down and four. Scoreboard says three, but they need close to the 39-yard line. They'll pitch it. It goes to Scoby. Scoby will get the first down of the 40 as he breaks it outside. Wrapped up around the ankles by Michael Jamison, the senior out of Colleen Ellison, who has two interceptions this season. Had five last year. Now for his career, he's got seven. Now this is a team that likes to have good balance. They certainly won't go into a panic mode. Uh, with the Aggies leading at 12 to nothing, they're keeping the ball on the ground and uh, have picked up a first down with two runs by Scobie. First down and 10, they're at their own 40, hash left, eye formation, Cart rights the full by play action, Beasley time to throw, does, caught wide open at the 50 yard line, first down, that'll get to Lockett, and Lockett will get the ball to the Aggie side of the 50, where Sean Weston and Terrence Keel combined on that tackle. Lockett into the game today, 23 receptions. Leading receiver is Morgan, coming into today's action, he had 36. Well, one of the things that makes a great receiver is to be able to find the hole in the zone. The Aggies that time in zone coverage. Lockett found the hole. Beasley found Lockett. And the uh, Wildcats are at midfield. Aggies lead in the ball game. 12-0. 12, 13-37 uh, to go. Scoby rolling to his left after the pitch. Turns the corner. Fights for yardage. He's down to the Aggie 41-yard line. Josh Scoby is a junior transfer out of Oklahoma. They're going to spot him uh, right about the 42. So it'll be KSU facing a Second down coming up. We'll need about two. The clock now at 12-16 in the second quarter. Beasley, their big quarterback, has at least one rushing touchdown in seven of their eight games this year. He has 15 touchdowns running the ball. Second down and two. Run the option. Beasley fakes the pitch. Has the first down and a bunch more. Slides down as he goes to his uh, rear end at the Aggie 26-yard line. And it was Cornelius Anthony looking him in the eyes, but not before he picks up 16 and a first down, stopping the clock at 12.41 to go. It's the second quarter. The Aggies leading Kansas State 12 to nothing. Kansas State's got the ball. Well, stopping the option is, uh, is a matter of discipline. Uh, you've got to have somebody that takes the quarterback and somebody takes the pitch man that time. Beasley with a good fake, and he was able to turn it up and get 16. High formation, Cartwright. And the tailback, Scobie, the handoff, hits the uh, right side, then changes directions as he gets in close, goes just to his left and picks up to the 21-yard line. That'll be a pickup of five yards. They'll face second down and five. Stephen Young, the senior, who was a 96 redshirt, made the stop. He's in the middle of that defensive front right now for Texas A&M. Uh, Scobie running hard off right tackle, looked like a pinball in a pinball machine, bounced off of two or three tacklers and was able to pick up five. Second down play coming up at the Aggie. 21. Hash right. Warren the tight end started to the left. Now comes to the right. Slot left. Now Warren's going back to the other side again. He'll stand up. Won't go down to the three point. A handoff. Scobie has the middle. He'll be close for a first down as he went right along that hash mark and carries to the 16 yard line. And he may have gotten it. He was stopped there by Brian Gamble, the sophomore from Alto. So they have moved the ball now with this drive having started. Back at their own 28-yard line. They've moved it down to the Aggie 15-yard line. That was indeed a first down carry. And yeah, this is a delay draw to Scobie, and he showed great quickness in taking that draw and picking up the first down. 
Yeah. They have a tight end on the right. Hand off against Scoby. Looking for a hole. He will get maybe a yard to the 14-yard line. Scoby hit the left side. Wrapped up. Hit head on by Michael Jamison. That'll be second down. And uh, we'll call it about eight. We'll be coming up. Boy, that's, a, Go ahead. that's exactly what you want to see from your strong safety, Dave. Uh, the strong safety being kind of a mix between a defensive back and a linebacker. Jamison brought a load into the middle of that hole and stopped Scoby for about uh, for less than a yard. Second down and nine. Clock under 11. They're calling an audible, moving some folks around here. Everybody had to come in close to Beasley to get the play. High formation. And the handoff to Scoby again. They hit him head on. Bonovich came up to meet him. And he gets the 11-yard line. It'll be third down and five coming up. KSU at the Aggie 11. As the clock works now to the 10:35 mark in the second quarter. And AM leading 12 to nothing. Well, this has been a good drive. Certainly the best drive for K-State all day. They started their own 28. They've moved it down to the Aggie 11. It's third and about six. On third downs, they are 39% this year in the ball game today. They are one out of two. Their third, third down opportunity. Aggies want to stop them here and make them settle on a field goal attempt. Flag. They move. They blow the whistle. They snapped the ball, but the uh, linesman here on this side said, stop. I just threw my uh, yellow handkerchief. But it was so loud down there, uh, nobody could even hear the whistle. Ball start. Shotgun. Cartwright to full back to the right of Beasley. Two wides left. Hey, was another again. flag. Right guard. He moved. He rocked back on his heels. That was third down and 11. It's going to be third down and 16. They're going the wrong way. The crowd is driving them crazy here. They cannot hear the cadence. Well, third down and 16. Ball back to the 21. Shotgun Beasley. Coverage. They'll throw the ball incomplete. Trying to get it to lock him with a screen left. Went over his head. Incomplete. Bring up fourth down. Now they tried that same jailbreak screen. It's incomplete. Beasley once again under heavy pressure. And the Aggies will hold, let's see, uh, at the 21-yard line. This will be about a 38-yard attempt. This guy, Jamie Ream, senior out of uh, Kansas, three letters, has hit nine field goals in a row. He's a preseason first-team All-American pick. For his career, he's 32 out of 40. He's going to spot this one down at about the 28-yard line, so a 38-yard attempt. It somewhat favors Hash to the right side. The holder is Mike Ronson. The deep snapper is Neil Gosh. They're trying to put points on the board. Drop the snap. He's rolling to his right. He's looking to throw. He's going deep. And it is intercepted by Texas A&M in the end zone. Sammy Davis. It'll be a touchback. Dave, I think they snapped the center, snapped this ball before they were ready for it. It was a low snap. It rolled back to Jamie Ream. He rolled to the right and threw it into the end zone, threw it up for grabs, and the Aggies will hold on K-State, and they'll get the ball out of the 20-yard line. And now the Aggies have turned in two. They now have 13 for the year. A&M's got the ball. First down and 10 at their own 20. 9.27 to go in the second quarter. Aggies lead 12 to nothing. Goings in motion. A handoff. Trying. No, he did not hand off. Throwing deep. Trying to get it to Ferguson. Incomplete into double coverage. And they're going to get a defensive pass interference call against the Wildcats at the 45-yard line. Well, a good play-action fake, and I think Mark Ferris didn't see Bethel Johnson on the post. He was open, and double coverage against Robert Ferguson. Let's see what this flag is. And one of the K-State players is pointing back toward Texas A&M. Let's see what the uh, referee, Hal Dow. Disregard the flag. The pass was not catchable. So here we go, two wides on the right, two on the left, single setback. Ferris will take the ball under center. Puts Porter in motion, going left to right. Had trouble as he took the snap. And we're going to be wrapped up in the backfield back around the 16-yard line. So now it'll be a third down coming up, and AM will need 14. We have 9-10 to go in the first half. Aggies leading 12 to nothing. They have two interceptions in the ball game. One by uh, Jason Glenn, the other by Sammy Davis. You know, it may not look like much when uh, Mark Ferris stumbles going back to give the handoff, but just that little bit of a delay messes up the timing of the play and the blocking scheme, and uh, that's what ruined the play. A stumble by Ferris, and it'll go for a loss. It's going to bring up a third and 14. Aggies on third downs now are 
four out of six. This will be their seventh third down opportunity for the season. A&M is uh, 39% on third downs, waiting on the snap. We'll check that again. Here has the snap. Now a flag, and everything stops. A&M 44.1% on their third down conversions. Here's Hal Dowd. Delay of game, one offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Register each week for tickets to Aggie football and dinner for four at the Bryan College Station, Jason's Deli. This week's winner is Marlia Cordova. So a five against the Aggies. Now we've been backed up as A&M's offense to the 11-yard line, facing third down now at 19. They've got to get the ball out to the 30. The go-to guy today has been Chris Taylor, who has three receptions for 60-plus yards. Once again, Dave, K-State not showing much blitz. They like pressure. I bet you they're coming here. Shotgun. Shotgun, Shotgun running back to the left of Ferris. He'll take the snap at his own six-yard line. Has the ball. Drops back to the three. Steps up. Lofting sideline. Bethel Johnson trying to get to it. Across the 50 incomplete at the KSU 47-yard line. Well, you got to like the play. You knew you were going to be under heavy pressure. They came with the blitz. Bethel Johnson got open, threw it. Uh, Mark Ferris threw it long before uh, Bethel Johnson was in any, any position to get it. And uh, it's just barely overthrown, but it's a good call on third and 19. You just might hook up. All right, here's Cody Skates to punt the ball. 31 kicks, a 40.9 average. The return man standing back at the KSU 38 is the dangerous David Allen. Skates is about three yards deep in his own end zone. Line of scrimmage, the 11. Has a good snap. They're coming. He got the kick away. High spiral. Allen drifting over. Will take the catch on a fair catch at their 46-yard line. At the 46, KSU, a fair catch, and that kick goes for 35 yards off the foot of Cody Skates. All right, for Aggie information, local news, and free Aggie email, visit AggieNetwork.com. It's brought to you by the Association of Former Students. High formation, he moves Warren the tight end right to left. He's got two wides on the left. Tight ends covered up. One of those guys, a split end. Beasley runs the option, swinging it out. Scobie, they're trying to get him into the sideline. He got a yard as he finally decided not go sideline and take it down to the south end. Got just a yard, picks up one. Second down and nine coming up, carried to the 47 yard line. Great discipline in stopping this play for only one yard. And Sean Weston fought the block off, kept containment, and helped make the tackle. Heck of a play by Weston. Second down, KSU at their 47. They've got to get the Aggie 44 for a first down. They come out and they show a heavy eye. No tight end on the left. That man, however, would be eligible. Rolling to the right after the snap. Stopping, throwing the ball, sideline. Morgan first down at the Aggie 39-yard line. Wide open, Quincy Morgan. And finally knocked out of the... Uh, playing field by Terrence Keel and Sean Weston. It goes 14 yards. Well, the uh, Wildcats going with the unbalanced line to the right, and that's the side to which they threw. Aggies with the zone coverage. Morgan found a hole on the uh, the sideline, and uh, Beasley was able to hit him for the first down. To the line of scrimmage, Conley, a Wildcat. Slot to the left, tight end on the right. Eye formation, Beasley. Now Warren, the tight end, asking what the play is. Has the snap, play action, drops straight back, pumps once, sideline, he threw it out of bounds. He had a man on the fly on that sideline over there, that's Lockett. Terrence Keel was close, but he threw that one near the track on the far side of the field, incomplete. And now second down and 10 coming up, 7-10 remaining in this first half, and him leads 12-0. They, they used Quincy Morgan as a decoy here. He ran a, a little curl route, and it drew in Sammy Davis. And then they brought Lockett out on the go pattern out, to, out along the sideline. The ball well overthrown. It'll bring up second and ten. Scobie and Cartwright leave the ball game. They'll run the play from a shotgun. Running back to the left. Beasley now moving up, calling it. Now you have to call a timeout. They were running out a 25-second clock. Got it with one second left on the 25-second clock. That will be their final timeout. And here's K-State after calling a timeout. They have none remaining. Second down and 10. Under center, Beasley. 
And the short of line to high, slot left, roll to the left, looking to throw, has time, goes sideline, and it is bobbled and incomplete. Out of bounds, Aggie 25, trying to hit Quincy Morgan, their leading receiver, who had 36 coming into the game today. Morgan uh, has one right now, Dave. Well, he has two catches for 26 yards, Dave. Uh, this time, uh, Sammy Davis with excellent coverage, went in front, tried to come up with the interception, but he, he shielded the ball enough that Morgan bobbled it as he was going out of bounds. It goes incomplete. Big third down and 10 right here. 7 5 remaining in the first half. Three wides to the left, tied in right, single setback, shotgun. Beasley has Cartwright, the fullback, to his left. Has the snap, adds the comet. Here's Beasley. He wants to run with the ball. They're going to run him out of the sideline, and he goes out of bounds at the Aggie 39 yard line and ran into the bench here and tumbled. He and the bench went to the track right in front of us. Uh, and now bring up fourth down. Hey, that was Harold Robertson there that was able to, to get containment on Beasley. Harold Robertson, the fastest of the AM linebackers, in there in a spy role in the nickel dime coverage and is able to run Beasley out of bounds with a one yard loss and it looks like K-State will be forced to punt the football. Also uh, on that play Beasley took out one of the uh, A&M student managers. So now here is Travis Brown. His second kick today. His first was for 51. Nicky Jones late getting out onto the field. Punch away. See if he can get it in the end zone. Let it go. Get a good bounce. It did not. It got a K-State bounce. They'll catch it at the three. Had backspin on it. And at the three, it'll be killed. That's a 37-yard punt by Brown. And that was a great kick. We're going to get a timeout on the field with 6.51 remaining in the first half. Texas A&M, two field goals, a touchdown. Try to pass on the two-point conversion. It was no good. Punt officially looks like 36 yards. So Ferguson's here on the left. Lonnie Madison's the tight end on the left side. I think Mahan's return now. He has as the tackle right. Eye formation. Ferguson's going in motion. Left to right. Snap it. Hand it off. It goes to Toombs. A yard to the four-yard line. Bonnie Beisel will wrap him up. He had 12 tackles as a performance against that uh, Oklahoma team that beat Nebraska today, 31-14. to Beisel, a senior, is 6'4", 255, and is a defensive end. Now the Aggies trying to get a little working room, trying to run Toombs off of tackle, and they'll only pick up one. They still have uh, second and nine, and are still backed up inside their own five. High formation again behind Ferris. Line of scrimmage to four. Tight end left. Ferguson again in motion. Left to right. There's the snap. Rolling right, throws, Ferguson at the 10, spilled as he goes down at the 9-yard line. Aggies now will face a third down with less than 6 on the clock at their own 9, needing the 14. Dave, the Aggies continue to move that pocket, rolling Ferris out to the right, and that's been effective against the Blitz. He finds Ferguson out in the flat and finally gets a little working room. And they're out almost to the 10-yard line, big third down. Beating the 13-yard line for the 14 would be a bonus. Three wides on the left. Nicky Jones is the widest of the three. Shotgun empty in the backfield. Ferris will take the snap at his own four. Has the ball. Time to throw. Caught first down. The man that was covering the receiver had fallen down. Got up, made the tackle at the 18-yard line. Yeah, the tackle was made by Gerard Cooper. And the ball, I think, was caught by Chris Taylor. Chris Taylor once again on a big third down completion. And that's the third time that uh, they've, they've gone to Chris Taylor for the first down, working against the strong safety, Gerard Cooper. And uh, he just ran a little hook route. And Ferris saw him, hit him right on the numbers of the number, number seven, and it'll pick up the first down at the 18. His fourth reception, I think, of the day. 68 yards, Dave. His first down and 10. And we put Whitaker in motion. The handoff, Tate's big hole, 30. Man on his back, 35, 36, 37 yard line. Right up the middle with Jumbo Jamar Toombs and the big rumble just got 18. Boy, that's got to be a Halloween nightmare when Joe, Jamar Toombs breaks into the secondary. He got ahead of steam up. And boy, I wouldn't want to be in the secondary for Kansas State with Jamar loose. First down, the Aggies, 453 remaining in the first half. They've got the ball. First down and 10 at their own 36-yard line, leading 12 to nothing. Trying to get points before the first half runs out. Single setback, Toombs. Under center, Ferris. Motion from Goins. 
and an end up a play action and a handoff to Toombs. They faked it end around to Goins. And Harris kept running back and all the while Toombs got it for a yard. Well, well, they're trying to set up that uh, that handoff to Goins. Uh, that's the play, uh, a play they ran earlier, uh, the direct handoff to Goins, and it was stopped for a loss. So this time they hand it to Toombs straight ahead, I like he'll to, pick up one. I like Goins on the TV show this week. They talked to him about the uh, touchdown against Iowa State. He said, yeah, I made the catch, and then I used my 4-2 speed to get me to the end zone. <laughs> Second down and nine with an eye formation. Slot left, break the eye. Whitaker in motion, going to the right. Handoff, uh, is it a keeper by? Ferris. He's being chased from the backside. Stiff arms the man of the two going to the sideline at the Aggie 41-yard line. They went rolling into the sideline into that wildcat bench. He and John McGraw. So now a third down and five. Clock stops 354 until halftime. The Aggies lead this game 12 to nothing playing Kansas State at Kyle Field. Same formation and the same action that was so successful for the Aggies two years ago in the Big 12 championship game. The names have changed. It's Sir Parker that was running that, uh, that action at the backside unbalanced and they were dropping him the football that uh, won the game for him. This time uh, they run uh, Whitaker out that side and Ferris follows him for about five yards. Shotgun. Running back to the right of Ferris. Has the snap. Waits to throw. Going deep. He's got Ferguson waiting for it. Caught it! On his fingertips. He beat his man. And he goes down at the 22-yard line. It's first down and 10. Texas A&M. It just went 37 yards. He just barely brought the ball back in. That reminds me of Bumgarner in St. Louis. Boy, Jeremy Drius Butler's got to be saying, what do I have to do to stop this play? I've got great coverage. And Ferguson just makes a miraculous catch on his fingertips and moves the Aggies down to the 22-yard line. Great throw by Ferris. Just brought it back in and Butler had the coverage and Ferguson was able to bring it in. First down and 10. Ball spotted now at the 22-yard line. K-State's end of the field. 3.33 remaining in the first half. Aggies up 12-0. Break the eye. Put a man in motion. Hand it off to Toombs. Little stutter step. Fights across the 20. Goes to the 19-yard line. Chris Johnson, a senior out of the state of Oklahoma, just made the stop. Once again, using that unbalanced line, this time back to the right and running Toombs up the middle. But there are a number of options they have with that set. Ferguson's first reception of the day is... I've got it marked here. Is that correct? No, that'll Second. be number two, Dave. He had a five-yarder oh, earlier. Right. So that gives him 37 now for the season. And he is trying to get over 700 yards for the year. Second down, seven. Under three remaining. Shotgun. Two wides to the right. Hash to the left. Running back to the left of Ferris. Starts the option. Now makes the pitch to Whitaker. Sideline he goes out of bounds at the 14-yard line. They're going to spot him officially at the 13. He's going to be a yard shy of a first down. He needed the 12. Ben Lieber responsible for running it into the sideline and out of bounds. Clock stops now. 2.46 to go in the first half. Here comes Madison and also De La Torre. Now De La Torre pirouettes and comes back this way. Ferguson's returning. And Stacy Jones has been sent in on third down and a yard. Aggies on third downs now are six out of nine today against a defense that had been allowing 29 percent on third downs. I formation. Two tights. Flanker right. Hand off to Tomes. Tomes fighting his way. Has the 10. Has the 8-yard line. Couldn't control him at the line of scrimmage. And then he suddenly took an angle to the sideline as he went left. First and goal now for the Aggies at the KSU 8-yard line. Dave, we talked last week against Iowa State about how Joe Weber was running with great authority. Today it's Jamar Tombs. He is a man possessed. He, does, he just will not go down. And he is taking the ball inside the Wildcat 10-yard line down to the eight. First and goal for AM. I've got him now 13 carries and 51 yards and a touchdown in the ball game today. I think that is uh, by far his best performance, carries and yards. First and goal, man in motion. Tombs, five, four, three, two, one, touchdown! Tried the middle, got a block, and that's all he needed. All right, their second touchdown of the day. They're specializing in that unbalanced line that was so successful against Kansas State two years ago in the Big 12 championship game. Once again, they go unbalanced, slot right, and just hand it to Toombs. He does the rest from eight yards out. The Aggies have taken a commanding 18 to nothing lead here at the end of the first half. They're going to kick an extra point. We'll go for one. 
Bonovich waiting on the snap from Pierce, has it, puts it down, into the ball goes the foot of Terrence Kitchens, it's good, and the Aggies now have made it 19 to nothing over Kansas State, we've got 2.14 remaining until halftime, and the Aggies are on a roll right now. And Dave, that's a 90 yard oh, drive for right. A&M. Oh, how about that one? Terrence Kitchen, sorry, the Cody skates now with the ball teed up at the 35. We'll kick off. Here's the kick, and it's going to be a little bit short. And they will take it at the 11. Here comes the return. That is Clayman. Cuts it back this way and goes to the 29-yard line. As we come back, short kick taken at about the 11-yard line by Chris Clayman. And he got it back to the 29-yard line. 205 remaining of the first half. And Texas A&M now leads by a score. 19 to nothing over Kansas State, K-State's ball. As we told you, on a 97-yard drive, it was 11 plays. The Aggies start their own three. They got a 37-yard completion on a great catch by Robert Ferguson, and an eight-yard run by Toombs gives the Aggies a lead, 19 zip. We've got 205 left in the first half. Toombs now is 14 carries, 59 yards. That's the most he's had since the Alamo Bowl last year against Penn State. Under center. There was movement, but no flag. They're going to throw the ball into the turf. Incomplete. Morgan at the 40-yard line. Incomplete. Second down and 10. So Jamar Toombs' last regular season game, of course, was uh, 37 of 126. That was against Texas. And then he went 19 for 70 against Penn State. He's got 14 carries today and 59 yards and two touchdowns. He's got 10 now in the year. It's second down and 10 coming up. And it's K-State's ball at their own 29-yard line. 2.02 remaining until halftime. And your Aggies lead here by a score of 19 to nothing. Shotgun for Beasley. Two wides with a slot left, wide right. And a running back. They're going to throw a screen. It's high. It was almost picked up. Almost picked up on a screen by Harold Robertson. Oh, he would have had a quick six had that ball been a little bit higher. Boy, you know you've got great coverage when uh, you've got two linebackers fighting for the interception. Brian Gamble also there, along with Robertson, may have gotten it in his vision. Oh, boy, this would have been a big play, but that will bring up a third and ten as they try to hit a screen and almost hit pay dirt for the Aggies. What do you have down there, Tom? Tom Turbeville. Okay, we'll get him in a minute. Third down and 10, 29-yard line. Ball almost in the middle of the field. The running back, David Allen, comes up to hear what Beasley's saying. And they will snap it. Play action. Beasley being chased. There's a flag. It's a delay, Dave. They, they did get it. I didn't oh, think the they got line. it. It's a delay. They got a delay of game. They didn't get it off. 158 remaining. First half. Penalized K-State delay a game. It's now third down and 15. Move back to the 24. Running backs both sides of Beasley. He'll start the play from a shotgun. Has a flanker left. Split in right. Drops back. Tosses one over the middle to Warren. He's tied in. And he's not enough for the first down. He falls forward to the 38-yard line. Needed the 39. As he caught the ball off his fingertips. That was a very athletic catch. And now fourth down and a yard coming up. And they're going to bring the chains in. And that, uh, I can tell you right now, did not pick up the first down. It was close, and you got to be impressed with what Warren just did on that catch. A great one-handed catch. He was right down the middle and uh, then dove for the first down as he was hit. They're going to measure this, but I'm with you, Dave. I think it's a full yard short. I think Kansas State asked for the measurement to get some time to make a decision whether or not they want to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, he's short by a bunch. Well, you got 140 remaining. On third downs now, they are one out of five. Aggies are seven out of ten. They going for it? And I can't imagine that they would, but who knows? We'll see. They're talking on the sideline. The Aggies lead 19 to nothing. They've not started the 25, so they're going to go for it. They've huddled up. Let's well, see they, they're gonna, they, they try to draw us off sides. Exactly. That, may be, that may be what they're trying to do. They come to the line of scrimmage. Everybody's bunched up there. Beasley going to try to sneak for it. He's going to be close, and I don't know if he got it or not. I don't know if I see this official on this side. Who's going to get the ball? Which official gets the ball? They're going to spot it down now, and they did get it. Beasley sneaks for it. Yeah, running back on either side of him lined up right behind his guards. And they snapped the ball, and everybody just moved forward. They got about a half yard more than they needed. 
They have no timeouts now. They're out of timeouts. You got 135 on the clock. They need to roll the clock, and they just did. It's first down and 10 at their own 39. Aggies lead 19 to nothing. Throw it. Little screen to the left side, and that will be Lockett looking for running room. And he gets it to the Aggie 49-yard line. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. 124 on the clock. A&M leading by a score of 19 to nothing. As the first half winds down here at Kyle Field, this has got to be one of the noisiest crowds we have had in a long time. They've lined it up on first down and 10. No timeouts for K-State. He's got the ball. Here's a flag. Movement, movement, movement. And throwing deep, and he'll catch the ball at the five. And uh, the whistle blew it dead. This will be meaningless. It'll just if it's a long one run for Quincy Morgan. <laughs> Caught it. The Ags, of course, have given up on the play. Illegal procedure against K-State. Move the ball back to the other side, the K-State side of the 50. I don't One, know that, 122 to go. I don't know if we mentioned this day, but Terrence Keel was back in the ballgame. He limped off a few plays ago. Beasley shotgun, running back to his right, has the snap, drops back, steps up, throws sideline into the Aggie bench. Incomplete. Second down and 15 coming up. Clock stops at the 111 mark. Sean Weston defensively. He has an interception this year, had that one against Wyoming. The guy is a senior to show his athleticism as a senior at Inglewood California High School. Had seven interceptions. Dave, one of the luxuries that the Aggies appear to have today is that they can go with a three-man rush and still get pressure. That play, only three rushing, but they forced Beasley to throw it before he wanted to. 19 to nothing, the Aggies. 111 remaining in the first half. It is second down and 15. Shotgun for Beasley. Has the snap, has time, throws sideline, and through the hands of Quincy Morgan. Would have been enough for a first down by a yard, but goes into the sideline as it went right through the palm of his hands. And this is a catch that Morgan will tell you he should make. He, he made a great move. He got Sammy Davis to buy his deep move, and Sammy was off of him a good five or six yards when he made the outcut. The ball was there, but you've got to catch the football. We're going to have a third and 15. Keep in mind now they had to convert on a fourth down to keep this ball. Now they are third down and 15. They've got to get the Aggie 39-yard line. They're at their own 46. Beasley and Audible telling his teammates. They're down to four seconds, down to three on the 25-second clock. Has the snap, rolls this way, sets up at the 35, going deep to Morgan, going sideline, and it's into the sideline. It's incomplete. Sammy Davis had him step for step. Sammy hit the tack over there, and fell on his backside. Well, he got, we got a short roll that time by Beasley, and he wanted the throwback corner to Morgan. Not only was Sammy Davis there, but Michael Jamison had coverage over the top, double coverage for the Aggies, and they've stopped K-State on this drive. But look out. There's only 59 seconds left. Watch for something tricky here. Line of scrimmage is the 46. K-State side of the 50. It is fourth down and 15. Here's Travis Brown. Has the snap. Punts away. Mickey uh, Jones asking for a fair catch. He has it at the Aggie 16-yard line. We got a little chicken fighting going on there at about the 25. A little pushing and shoving. Bears brings his offensive unit out on the field, and they are lining up like they're going to do a clock killer. That's exactly what it's looking like, and Ferris will take the snap and drop back and take the knee, and will take it back at the 13. So they'll reset now everything, and game clock's down to 44, down to 43. Can't disagree with this. You've know, you got a 19 to nothing lead. And, Dave, uh, I'm sure there are people out there in the stands that are saying, well, why aren't we trying to score? If somebody had told R.C. Slocum you can go to halftime leading Kansas State, the number 10 team in the country, 19 to nothing, you'd take it. You don't want to make a mistake here and let Kansas State get the momentum for the second half. This will be the last snap of the first half, and we will go to halftime with your Aggies up in the ball game by a score of 19 to nothing. The last 15 seconds will roll off here. As we go to halftime at Kyle Field, keep the spirit alive. Aggies, don't let Aggies drink and drive for a safe drive. Oh, Carpool, carrying Aggies and protecting our lives. Call Carpool, 693-9905. 19 to nothing at halftime. A&M leading number eight, Kansas State. This is the Texas Aggie Radio Network.
second half has kicked off, and it will be Texas A&M going into the wind in the third quarter. The wind at the back of the Wildcats for the third quarter. They kick off. They kick it into the end zone. We take the knee, and the Aggies bring it out to the 20-yard line, leading here by a score of 19 to nothing. 14.55 remaining in the third. We're just underway and about to snap the ball from the line of scrimmage for the first time. Ferris taking his time, moving in behind his center, Seth McKinney. Single setback, two wides on the left. Both of those are flankers. There's a tight end in that direction. Split in right. Play action, rolling, throwing, and it's caught, and it'll be out to the 29-yard line. That's Roderick Broughton again. I think that's his second catch of the ball game. He caught it for nine yards to the 29. There was a man closing like a locomotive coming from the backside on Ferris, but he got rid of the ball. Well, Dave, they liked the first half so much that they came back and opened the second half with exactly Exactly the same play they opened the first half, put Goins in motion. They wanted to hit him out in the flat, but they did just like they did in the first half. It was covered. They go to the tight end, and it's going to be second and less than a yard. High formation, and the uh, lead back will be uh, Weber. The tailback is Taylor, and Taylor now will break that eye and come back this way. Going in motion, and there was a mess up in the backfield. Weber was supposed to get the ball, and instead Ferris has to carry, and he got back to the line of scrimmage. Ferris turned around, and where is Weber? Oh, where, oh, where is my tailback gone? And he got back to the line of scrimmage, and now it's third down and a yard. He was wrapped up by Monty Bissell. That'll be one of the easier tackles he's made this year. I think what happened, Dave, is that uh, Mark Ferris forgot that uh, Weber was lined up as the fullback, thought he was at the tailback, but Chris Taylor was back there, went in motion. So by the time he turned around, Weber was already gone. All right, Stacy Jones the full, and Jamar Toombs is the tail, and Jamar Toombs will get the handoff. He is fighting for a first down, and I don't think he got it. He's going to be shy of the 30-yard line. However, Roderick Broughton is saying he got it. Now, the official on this side, if he'll spot the ball, that's fourth down. down. Didn't get it. Official over here was walking on the 30, but the official spot is from the uh, member of this crew coming in from the far sideline. So now we're looking at fourth down and short. And here comes the uh, punt team out on the field as they roll the 25-second clock. Just now started. So we will go three and out on the first possession of the second half. And it was a broken play that ended up killing this first possession. The Ferris turning one way and Weber going the other. Now it skates. Standing back at his 16-yard line. Line of scrimmage is the 29. They're coming up the middle and he just did get it off. It's going over to the far sideline and will bounce out of bounds at the uh, 44. Now they're going to give it the 41. The 41, and that is the K-State 41. And the punt by Skates is good for 30, and he kicked it away from them. It was either Lockett or Allen back there. So for 30 yards on the punt by Skates, he had just one punt in the first half. Is that right? 43 yes. yards on his punt in the first half. So this one goes for 30. And here comes K-State for the first time in the second half on offense. 12.42 to go in the third. Aggies lead 19 to nothing. Beasley, the fine quarterback, will uh, run this play by going under center. Split backs, handoff, backfield, coming this way. Aggies are chasing Lockett to the sideline, and he's going to be close for the first down. They'll give him the first down at the Aggie 49-yard line. He outraced the defense, coming to the open side. And we'll get a first down, I believe. He did across the Aggie 49, so it's first down and 10. By David Allen. Sammy Davis is coming off the field right now. Oh, he is looking news. at his right leg. He was just explaining to the training staff what happened to him on that play. So Davis is out of the ball game. First down and 10 at the Aggie 49. Hash left. The fullback got the handoff. Cartwright is being wrestled to the ground by Ty Warren. He'll get two to the 47-yard line. This is a big possession now for K-State. They would like to get something established to start the second half. It's a big possession for the Aggie wrecking crew. They want to pick up in the second half where they left off in the first half, and that's throwing a shutout. So the most second down. The most important possessions uh, in any ball game, of any big game like this, are generally the first couple of possessions of the second half because it sets the tone for the rest of the game. Second down and eight. Twelve minutes to go on the third. High formation behind Beasley. Drops back after play action. Under some pressure. Looking around. Throwing the ball. Incomplete. Down at the Aggie 31-yard line. He was under a lot of pressure. Back with the receiver, Michael Jamison and Cornelius Anthony Lockett, the intended man. He was sliding to the turf at the 30-yard line whenever he uh, had it go incomplete right at his feet. 
Once again at that zone coverage, Cornelius Anthony getting a good drop, and this ball well underthrown. And we're going to have another big play here. It's a third down, and K-State is one for eight so far today in third down conversion. One for six. Oh, excuse me, one for six. Here's third down and eight. Shotgun running backs both sides of Beasley. Waiting on the snap. He'll take it at his own 48. Drops back to the KSU 44. Over the middle of the tight end, Warren. Breaks the tackle. He's at the 30, and he's across the 30 to the 28-yard line. Perfect play. Warren made the catch, and he will move it down to the 29. That's good for 18 yards, and they convert. They are now one for seven on third downs. It's uh, two for seven on third downs, and they are first and 10 at the Aggie 29. 11.45 to go in the third. Texas A&M leads 19 to nothing. First down play. They'll run it from the right hash mark. Open side then to the left. Slot left. Tight end right. I formation. Jonathan Beasley waiting on the snap. Has it. Starts the option. Fakes the pitch. Now pitches into the sideline. Loses back to the 31. He was trying to get his trailing back. David Allen and threw it in front of him. Jason Glenn chasing Beasley along with Brian Gamble. Second down coming up. And now 12 will be needed. They need the Aggie 19. Here comes Robertson, Brooks, and Bonovich out on the field. Terrence Hill limping badly. As he comes off. Coming off to this sideline, we brought Keel, uh, Stephen Young, and Cornelius Anthony out of the ball game. Sammy Davis has returned out of the lineup. Second down and 12 coming up at their 31. And I play action back to the 40. Outside pressure, throwing, going end zone. And at the goal line, caught by Lockett. Touchdown, Kansas State. He beat Bonovich to the goal line. Cut it at the one and rolled right into the end zone, and just like that, Kansas State breaks the shot out and puts points on the board. It's now 19-6 before the point after. So they do exactly what they needed to do, and that's to come out and get points on their first possession. That probably looks like their offense does most of the time. That's just a corner route to lock it. He was wide open. Good throw from Beasley. Waiting on the snap for the extra point. It's on its way, and he kicks it through. 19 to 7 is the score. Texas A&M leads in the ball game over KSU with 11:20 remaining in the third quarter, and a timeout down on the field. And K-State with the wind at their back throughout the third quarter is about to kick off. He's approaching the ball. Reams. This one will sail out of the end zone, and uh, that'll hit right in front of the stands in the zone. And they'll bring it out to the 20. So both times now A&M here in the second half will start at their own 20. They went three and out after a busted play on their first possession. It was a second down and a yard. And then they could not convert on third down and short. And ended up punting the ball. And then from 59 yards away, they uh, give the ball to the uh, Wildcats. And they'll score on a six-play 59-yard drive. First down and 10 at their own 20. Under center. Ferris goes in motion. Hand off went to Toombs. Tries the middle. Gets three to the 23-yard line. Second and seven will be coming up. Toombs and they with 14 carries and 59 yards. Here comes uh, Jones and Whitaker onto the field. Goins is coming off and Ferguson's coming off on second down and seven. Aggies would probably like to keep the ball on the ground here, pick up some first downs, establish the ground game, and eat up some clock against the wind. Rushed for 98 yards in the first half. High formation, tight end on the right. Jones going in motion. Deep pitch coming back this way to Whitaker. They're closing on him, and they'll catch him and drop him at the 20. We lose three, third and 10 coming up. They may be geared for the run here in the second half. Terry Pierce starting the ball game today, made that tackle on Whitaker. Pitch right, open side of the formation. Well, it, it would be likely that the uh, strategy defensively for Kansas State would be to shut down the run because if they let A&M run the ball, they're going to eat the clock up. Trailing by 19, they can't afford to do that. So the Aggies are going to have to throw the ball successfully here to uh, keep this lead. Third down and 10, two wides left, one on the right. Out of the shotgun, setting up, throwing, and it's incomplete. Throw it into double coverage, wanting to hit Bethel Johnson at the... Aggie 45, we go three and out again. 
So he tried to get a bunch by going to Johnson. Double coverage at the 45-yard line, and now we'll punt the ball. They were coming the last time Skates kicked it. And he kicked it to the far sideline, kicking it away from David Allen, their fine return man. Allen into the ball game today. Of course, he missed a lot of playing time. Seven returns and a 13-4 average. Let's see if that might be Lockett. Kicking it this side on this punt. Coming up on a fair catch, and he'll take it on the Aggie side of the 50 at the 48. And that indeed was Allen. So a fair catch and a timeout called. That was a 28-yard punt into the win by Skates. He's got 43, 30, and 28 now on his kicks. And they're only 48 yards away. We need some record crew on this possession. 9.49 to go in the third quarter. AM leading Kansas State 19 to 7. 9.49 to go in the third. The Aggies lead 19 to 7. First to 10. K State Aggie 48 yard line option. May have been a busted play. And here is Beasley keeping across the 45, leaping over a man and hitting hard at the Aggie 41 yard line. Wes Botovich and Cornelius Anthony, but he gets seven. Second and three. That's just a, another option uh, off the option series where you can fake it to the fullback and have the quarterback follow the fullback into the line and he'll pick up almost seven. Quincy Morgan goes right, log it left, tight end Warren left and it's a handoff coming to the tailback. He is fighting for the first down to Allen. He won't get it. He goes to the 39. He is a yard shy. Now third down and one coming up for the Wildcats at the Aggie 39 yard line. Cornelius Anthony met him head on. Cornelius into the ball game today with 49 tackles. Now third and one. They're looking at the sideline. Beasley has the play from his sideline. He is 6'1. He is 215. Senior three letters from Glendale, Arizona. Third down and one. Beasley is under center with an eye. Puts a man in motion. Wait a snap. Has it. Hands off. Goes to Allen. And he is going to get the first down to the 37-yard line. He tried the left side. He hit a man, bounced off, then continued to the 37, where Jason Glenn finally was able to finish the tackle. But they pick up a first down. On Moving now to first down and 10. They are now three out of eight on third down conversion. And Roy Lynn Bradley came to the sideline holding his left arm. Let's hope that's not anything serious. He's on the bench and the training staff attending to him. Log it right. Morgan to the left, I full back, Cartwright, big hole, 30, 29-yard line. He just got about seven or eight. Second down coming up. They are moving the ball now on the wrecking crew. Uh, this looks like a different Kansas State team here in the second half, opening up big holes and working it on the ground. That one picks up eight. Had Ron Edwards in that time, but he had to limp off. He's got a bad hand on the move. Steven Young back in at the nose tackle. Second down and about two. Man in motion, Cartwright, pitch, Allen going right. Aggies trying to string it out. He leaps him out and he loses a yard back to the 30. That'll bring up a third down and three. They've got to get to the Aggie 27. Gerard Penwright, sophomore out of Aldine Eisenhower, along with Wes Bonovich on the tackle. And now the crowd trying to make some noise. Supporting the Rangan crew. Robertson and Brooks check in. Young and Anthony coming off. Jason Glenn made this last play. He didn't make the tackle, but he took out all of the interference, worked his way outside, kept containment. Third down and three. Warren, the tight end, goes left to right. Now he goes set. An audible, and they're having to bring everybody up close to Beasley to get the play. Has the snap, looking to throw. He's going sideline. He's got a man, and he caught it. He goes out of bounds. At the Aggie six, and that's Lockett. He beat Sean Weston. That'll go good for 24 yards. Dave, this is an absolutely perfect throw from Beasley. Sammy Day or Weston with uh, with pretty good coverage, but lofted over his head, and a perfect throw from Beasley will get the first down for KSU down at the Aggie six yard line. Went out of bounds at about the six and a half first and goal. Brandon Clark, a reserve wideout, has checked into the lineup. First and goal at the Aggie, six and a half. I formation, slot left, tight end to the right, open side to the right, under center. Clark goes in motion, spins and comes back this way. Goes to Allen, looking for the right corner. He's cut down behind the line of scrimmage back at the nine by Jason Glenn. 
Jason Glenn is playing a great football game, a very smart football game. He kept containment. Nobody blocked him. He made the tackle for a big loss, and this is huge down in this territory. Jeff stringing it out to the right side. They went left hash mark, right hash mark. Second and goal from the nine. 6.25 to go. In the third, the Aggies lead 19 to 7. KSU the ball, second and goal, nine yard line. And they hand off, that's play action. Beasley cuts it, down to the five, down to the four. Third and goal now at the four. Beasley started option, back to the left side. Decided to keep as he cut it on this near side hash mark. Third and goal, 6-0-4, 6-0-3, 0-2. Hit six minutes now. Into the lineup, he'll make another change. Clark goes out. Get that change in a moment. It's a guy off the old spotter board here. Corey Hoffman. Well, yeah. Hoffman, who is actually a defensive lineman, has checked in. He'll play tight in on the left side. Third and goal at the four. Offset in the backfield. Has the ball. Play action. Rolling right. Looking zone. Under pressure. Throw it. And it's incomplete. Knocked down. Three Aggies on the coverage, including Brian Gamble. They had the full back and the big tight end Warren in the zone. Now it's fourth and goal at the four. And they'll kick a field goal, apparently. And here comes Ream onto the field. Five and a half to go on the third. And they will try to cut the lead to an Aggie nine-point advantage. It's 19 to seven right now. Roll out by Beasley to the right, and he had the 6-7 Warren. He threw it up, hoping he could outleap everybody. But three Aggies there to knock it away. Spotted down at the 12. It's a 22-yard effort by Ream. Waiting on the snap, has it, here's the kick, and it is through, and it's good, and it's 19 to 10. Texas A&M has a nine-point lead with 529 remaining of the third quarter at Kyle Field, leading Kansas State. This is Texas Aggie football. This will be the third time K-State's kicked off in the second half. They've scored now on both of their possessions. Here is the kick out of the end zone, out to the 20. So we've started first and 10 at our 23 times. First two times the Aggies have touched the ball in the second half. Gone three and out. 5.24 remaining of the third quarter, and Texas A&M leads by nine. It's 19 to 10. Here's a point in time in the uh, game where you need the Aggie O to do something. Yeah, with 5.24 left here in the third quarter, you'd like to see them have uh, some possession time to get out of poor field position and try to run out the rest of this third quarter where they're working against a strong win. Three wides on the left, one on the right, running back to the right of Ferris on the inside, handoff to Whitaker, dancing around the backfield, now cuts it back to his right, carries to the 22, second and eight coming up. Be all you can be in the Army Reserve. Call your Army Reserve recruiter today at 1-800-USA-ARMY. Paid for by the Army Reserve. Second and eight. Aggies have the ball at their own 22. As Whitaker checks out of the lineup. Coming this way, Taylor. Going the other way is Ferguson and Porter also coming on this side. Mickey Jones and Bethel Johnson empty in the backfield. On second and eight, Porter going in motion. Coming back to this side. Has the snap. Rolling, throwing, and Bethel will catch it for about a yard gain to the 23-yard line. Wrapped up immediately by Deron Tyler. Ferris rolling to the right again to get away from the pressure, but pressure coming from strong from the outside. And this is just a quick out route. And as you said, it'll only go for one yard to bring up another big third down play for the Aggie O. Almost all of the end zone now at the north ends. In sunlight, the northeast corner of the field still in the sunlight. Everything else just about in shadows. Third down and seven at their own 23. The Aggies from a shotgun. Time to throw. Pumps once. Now he does throw high over the head of everybody. We're going to go three and out for the third consecutive time. Incomplete pass. 4-0-1 to go. Kansas State sensing they might be able to get back into this thing. They have stopped the Aggies dead in their tracks on the first three possessions of the second half. Three and a punt each time. Here comes Skates again. Well, that does a couple of things. You don't move the ball down the field, so how, no matter how good the punt is, it gives Kansas State good field position, but it also puts the Aggie defense on the field for a long period of time. David Allen, good snap. 
Containment. He's kicked it off to this side. A good punt. It's coming to the side of the field and out of bounds it'll go. We'll get the spot here in a moment. They're going 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39 yard line. The Aggies will see Kansas State take the ball at their own 39. That was a 38 yard kick. He's gone 43, 30, 28, 38 now in his kicks today. Cody Skates had an average of 40.9. Five times this season, he's had an average in a game of 40 or better. His average today will be a lot less than that. First down and 10, K-State at their 39. Their last drive started, what, at their own 48-yard line? At right, the Aggie 48. And it's a play action. Drop back. Going to go deep over the middle. He's got a man. Will he get him? He's off his fingertips as he goes to lock it. And at the 15, he had beaten Sean Weston. If that ball is there, he's going to score. But he stretched out. Couldn't bring it in. Second and 10 coming up. Well, this looked like an awfully good throw. I'll look at it again on the replay. I thought that the Lockett could have caught this without the jump. And it went right through his hands. It was a great throw from Beasley. Second down and 10. KSU line. Lockett goes left. Quincy Morgan here. I look to the right. Quincy Morgan on the left. Tie it in right. Eye. Break the eye. Cartwright in motion. Hand off. We'll go to Scobie who returns. Gets about three. It'll be third down and seven coming up. He moved the ball to the KSU 42-yard line. Three and a half to go in the third quarter. The Aggies lead 19 to 10. Ten unanswered points now for KSU. And they have scored on their first two possessions of the second half. This being their third. Well, another reason for that they've scored is that they've been uh, good on third down uh, conversions. They came into this half one for six, and they've had they've converted on every third down in the second half. Third down and seven. Shotgun. Slot to the right. Split in to the left. Laker left. Tight end left. Has the snap. Drops back. Going sideline. Aggies are right there. And there's a push in the middle of the back. And that's got to be offensive pass interference. That cannot be defensive pass interference. I'm with you, Dave. He was pushed down. Lockett pushed Jay Brooks down. Oh, my. They're going to call it against AM. Oh, no. no. That was a terrible, terrible call. It's first down and 10 at the Aggie 43 following a 15 yard penalty. Slot left. Split in right, high formation. Lock it in motion, going to the open side. Now Spence comes back this way. Hand off, Scoby has a hole. And gets about five or six yards to the Aggie 37-yard line. It'll be second down and four coming up. He picked up six. Cornelius Anthony just made the stop. Well, that'll be one right there that will uh, definitely be looked at by the uh, Big 12 when they evaluate this game on the officials. Uh, it's huge. Keeps the drive alive, and uh, they're now down at the uh, A&M 37 and a half yard line. 19 to 10, the score, 225 remaining in the third. Aggies lead, option. Baisley cuts it. Now he'll get to the 35 yard line. He's shy of a first down by two. It's gonna be third down and two coming up. Third and two at the Aggie 35. They've now got 240 yards of total offense. The Aggies have 242 yards of total O. Lockett leaves the game. They'll bring in the uh, defensive tackle who's playing tight end, Corey Hoffman. He's an extra tight end. Third down and two. High formation. Handoff. Scobie. Aggies stopped him at the 35. It'll be fourth and two. Now they'll make a decision. Yeah, this would be a field goal attempt of over 50 yards, but with the win, Ream has that kind of range, or they'll go for it on fourth and two. I don't see a field goal attempt. It looks like they'll go for it here on fourth and two. Fourth down and two. They want to convert. Now they've converted on a fourth down earlier here in this quarter. Or in the game. One minute, 20 seconds to go. Two to the right. High formation. Tight end is covered up. Unbalanced line. Baisley waiting on the snap. Calling an audible. His running backs will come up to hear it. He'll send them back to get him set. 
has the snap, running the option. Hit from the back side, he won't get it. Knocked out at the 35, fourth down conversion. No good. He got 58 seconds to go in the third, and the Aggies will hold him on a fourth down. 19 to 10, the Aggies lead KSU. Well, Beasley made the rollout, a reverse pivot, and came back out to his left. And he was going to keep the ball, but he was caught from behind. And the Aggies have held. They've stopped Kansas State on a fourth and two attempt and will take over at their own 35-yard line. So other than the 15-yard penalty, a bad